Hey, welcome to Broken World Entertainment, and this is my review for the brand new Hellraiser movie. I'm going to do a non-spoiler, and then I'll get into spoilers, but I'll give you a fair warning. Uh, so we can't go too deep into everything in the non-spoiler, because there's a lot kind of there that uh, comes through the spoilers. So I'll just give you a rough breakdown of the story and some of the characters. So the movie really centers around the idea of addiction. So our main character, Riley, is a recovering addict. And her brother, uh, who she's living with, I'm not sure if if he was an addict it's it's kind of implied that maybe he was but i don't think he was uh, her brother name was matt so he's doing everything in his power to help her but he's kind of suffocating her a bit with it but you can see why um and the addiction that she has is like drinking drugs and it goes very much with our other character, Vought, who is the guy you see in the trailers wanting people to um, figure out the puzzle box. His addiction is he wants things, basically. You know? Uh, which, when we get into spoilers, you get more into that as for what what the story is is the story is Vot has the box and he has to get people to figure out the next configuration of the box and once they do it cuts them which marks them and it marks them for the Cenobites to come and collect which is why you get the line in the trailer of the guy saying, uh, who was called Joey, saying, would he win a prize? And Vot says, he does. And he's basically trying to summon the Cenobites because he, he wants the gift that they offer. Um. So, he's tr selecting sacrifices, basically, for the, uh, the Cenobites. Because he's trying to get to uh, the last configuration. But, Riley and her boyfriend, Trevor... We do skip six years ahead. The, the whole thing of the guy getting cut and taken by the chains you see in the trailer. That's the very start of the movie. And then we go six years later and we meet Riley and Trevor. And she has to try and come up with getting money because she's sick of being broke. And he knows where there's stuff and... The stuff happens to be the box. He didn't know it was the box. And it was the box. And things escalate from there. She fiddles with the box. Which we see in the trailer. She gets one of the configurations. And the blade misses her. Which we all see in the trailer. But that still summons the Cenobites. Now, just so we know, the way the story in the movie is structured is very similar to the original Hellraiser in the sense that the Cenobites are not the main focus as much as figuring out the puzzle and whatnot. Because if anyone of you have ever watched the original Hellraiser, you'll know that Pinhead which is the hell priest 
doesn't really show up until almost the end of the movie. It, this isn't the case with this one, but they're still, they're not front and centre the entire movie. It is a bit of a slow burn to start with. So be warned about that. And we don't get to see the Cenobites for the first half hour. Ooh, stuff does happen. There is things happening. But to actually physically see the Cenobites, we don't get that until a half hour. But it all starts going a bit crazy. And of course, she's on pills and thinks it's all in her head. And situations happen. So, Vought was trying to get to, for how do you pronounce this thing? Uh, Verrayton or something like that I think it's called which is the last configuration um, I'm trying to think of what else I can say that doesn't go into the spoiler territory but I suppose I could get into a bit of the Cenobites and the kind of things they do so as we all know the new Hell Priest is a transgender actress named Jamie Clayton. Do they play on that? No, not really. You know, there's, there's no reference to to them being called her. Well, that, no, that'll be a spoiler. So there's no real, they don't play on the fact that it's meant to be a woman or anything like that. And the one thing keep in mind is the original books of Hellraiser, the Hell Priest Pinhead, doesn't actually have a gender. They are simply a being of uh, pain. That's it. You know, they weren't a male, they weren't a female. They were just a conduit of pain, basically. So her testing makes no difference of whether. It's meant to be a man or a woman. Or whatever. She does a good job for what she does. She really doesn't have a hell of a lot to do. But she does a good job. And unlike the original. There are more than just. A couple of. Cenobites. So we have her as the hell priest. We have Chatterer. Chatterer is back in it. But he's a different version of it. We have one called the Whisper. Or the Weeper, sorry. Who I think is the one you see in the trailer. With the weird kind of black half mask looking face. Uh, we have one, the Gasp. Who is a newer version of... The original version, which was called Deep Throat. The woman who has the, in the original, the neck kind of open. She's a newer version of her. Uh, then we have one called the Sphinx. Um, who I think is one that has, it's, it's <laughs> there's a lot of the things. There's one called the Mother. There's the Mask. Which you see in the trailer. And. There are a couple of more. You know. Th there's a fair amount of them. What about the gore. That would be in this. Uh, to be honest. There's not. There's not really that much. In sense of. Over the top gore. It's kind of more. Very in the line of what. You got in the original movie. Uh, it, there's no jump scares in this. They didn't go for the whole jump scare thing. They do take the story quite seriously. Uh, which is different to most things these days. Um, and yeah, like the, the look of the Cenobites is great this time around. 
you know, they're not in all the kind of leather gear and stuff that was in the original. Pretty much almost all of their kind of suits are actually the skin. You know, so it, it's it, it's crazy looking and yeah. So the sets look great. The music is quite interesting as well. Uh, it really works well with it. The visuals are great. And yeah, the Cenobites look great. So that's really all I can say in non-spoiler territory about this movie. Leviathan. That's what the thing is called. Leviathan. Uh, so I'm going to jump into spoilers now. So if you haven't seen it yet and you plan to see it. Stop the video, go watch it, and come back, and we can discuss the spoilers. Uh, but you've been fair warned now. Spoilers coming. Three, two, one. We're in spoilers. So, as we discussed, the movie starts off with Vought, uh sacrificing a guy called Joey. So, the configuration the box is on is the second last configuration. So, he just needs this one life to give till he gets the uh, last configuration for the Leviathan. So, the guy does it. The blade comes out and goes right through his hand. So, he goes to try and leave and Vot hits the switch and it shuts a door this gay kind of thing and the guy starts kind of trip it kind of drugs you so all of a sudden the chains come out and go through his leg they don't wrap around his leg they come through his leg and start dragging him off and while that's all happening Vought starts bowing down and looks up and the room they're in is this big kind of round room and there's a huge window on the roof and you see the clouds and the lightning and stuff. And he's uh, basically begging for Leviathan to come and give him his gift. And while he's on his knees begging with the new configuration. Sitting up on this. Uh, what what would you call it? A little kind of pole pedestal type thing. You see Joey getting pinned up half kind of blurry off to the side of him and he's just completely ignored and like he's getting pinned up chains are coming out from all angles just holding him up in the air torturing so we jump six years later and we meet Riley and Trevor as I said she's broke she doesn't want to be her brother doesn't want her to be seeing this Joey because he thinks he's a bad influence on her. We meet all of our characters in this scene. So we meet Riley. Trevor's gone. He just leaves. We meet Matt. Matt's gay. They don't really shove that in your face. His relationship is plays out. In terms of scenes you kind of get. That you get with a straight couple. Uh, so he's gay. Lives with his boyfriend Colin. Uh, and there is a girl there. I don't think the girl lives with them. But she always seems to be there. Name Nora. Uh, oh it says here she's a roommate. So okay so she does live with them. Um, so. Uh, Riley goes off with Trevor to. He says he. There's an abandoned warehouse. But there's always a. A container there. With stuff being sent. He doesn't know what's there what's being said but he's got the code to the warehouse because he used to work there a bit so him and Riley go to steal whatever is in the container they open the container there's a safe in it they open the safe there's a box in it what's in the box the box is the configuration box so Trevor's all disappointed she's like well it must be worth something so she takes it 
Uh, she's messing with it. And I think, where is she messing with it? I, she's messing with it in his place, I think. And she opens it. Oh no, sorry. She doesn't open it yet. She ends up having drinks. She's a recovering addict. She had drinks with Trevor before they stole the thing. So she arrives home and she's pissed as a fart. And her brother gets up and like he's very overprotective of her. And he's complained that she's drunk and tells her, right, just sleep it off because you're pissed. You know, he's like, have you taken pills or anything? She's like, no. And he's just at her and at her. And she's like, just say it. Just tell me to get her. And so he tells her, pack your shit and get the fuck out of the house. So she does. She packs up. He said, now sleep it off. But in the morning, pack up and leave. She doesn't do that. She packs up right away and leaves. So his boyfriend, Trevor, is outside having a cigarette and tells her to come back inside. That, you know, he'll calm down. And she just walks off. She goes to sleep in her car, which is around the corner. But she drops a load of pills. Well, she doesn't actually drop them. She takes them out of her bag and she pours them out. But then she goes back and picks three of them up. Takes the pills. Jumps over a fence with the box. Now she has the box. And goes into this little play park. And she sits on a merry-go-round. And she manages to figure out that oh look this thing moves and stuff and she figures out the first configuration but avoids getting stabbed by the blade but it still calls the Cenobites so she starts hearing them calling her and telling her to keep going she must keep going now so she obviously thinks she's tripping Eh. Uh, but the brother goes looking for her and finds her passed out on the miracle round. But the blade is still sticking out on the box and he grabs the box off and stabs himself. So now he's marked. So he brings her to like a public bathroom and he puts her down, tells her to wait there, he's going to bring her home. He's just going to clean off the cut. So he goes into the bathroom, washes his hands, but... All of a sudden, the sinks aren't working. The blood starts spewing out of the sink, which you see in the trailer. And the walls. And then we just hear him scream from outside. And she goes running in. And the scream is still happening right as she gets into the bathroom. And it stops. And there's no signs of him. So now her kind of objective is to find her brother. So they're all wondering what happened. Where is he? What's going on? What's the story with the configuration? She starts explaining. You know. He cut himself on this. And blah blah blah. And she. You know, explains that she's starting to hear things. From it. She thought she was just. Tripping. But she's still hearing it. She's still hearing the Cenobites. The hell priest. Telling her. Things. And we get to the point where. She wants to find. Who owned the container whose warehouse so she finds out it's Vot uh, they go to well she goes to Vot's house which now has all this big metal structure around it and she breaks into the house and she hits, finds these power switch boxes and she presses them and one of them starts to configure that metal structure around the house. Like the box. So. She goes to get information as well. Before she goes to the house. From. um A, a woman. Serena I think her name was. Who worked for Vos. She was the one who. Uh, got the box for him. And the one who sent. The dude Joey down to him. To sacrifice. So she's in. A kind of a retirement home where she's dying of cancer but she's giving Riley the information of like 
look, Vought wanted this thing. He thought they were angels. And she says, even a devil should have known devils. She kind of has a bit of a struggle with Riley and she manages to cut herself with the, uh, with the box. So she gets taken as well by the Cenobites. And this is where we kind of meet a few of the Cenobites. We get the the Weeper one. We get uh, the, ga- the Gasp or Gape, whatever it's called. And one or two others. Pit, did Pinhead show up at that point? No, I don't think so. So, Riley's in Vots. The rest of the gang show up. Because she, she meets the Hell Priest in here. And, it, like, it, it goes crazy. And she sees her brother, Matt. And she's hugging him. But you see her hand going into all, like, the muscle and meat and stuff and then in the mirror and it's very reminiscent of the character Frank in the original when he was just <laughs> basically skinned looking so she screams turns around and there's the rest of them Trevor, Colin and Nora they're all looking around the house Riley right, did find books and books on the box from Vought Nora finds a secret door, ends up in this tunnel system kind of in the house where someone all of a sudden shows up and stabs her in the back with the box. Uh, And we find out that that person that's hiding in the house that's very reminiscent of a Santa boy is Vought. He's still alive. He's presumed dead, but he's still... So Nora gets taken... Uh, this is where we kind of really meet all the DM Cenobite. Well, not all of them, but a good chunk of them. So this is when we get to see the mask, who you see in the trailer. It's that scene in the trailer where he comes out of nowhere, then Chatterer comes from the side. Then Pinhead is there. So straps Nora up and basically asks her, because she starts praying, what's she praying for? And... They manage to get Nora. Can't quite remember how. But they they managed to get her out. Get her into a... Or is it Nora? At this point. Yeah, it's Nora. Because they get her out and get her into a van. And they're trying to drive away. But... Are she, that's how they get her before. <laughs> she's not in the tunnels when she gets taken. She's in the van. And the van starts to change on her. So as she's being tortured. And being pulled apart. Riley notices it happening in the rear view mirror. And as they all turn around. Because they all kind of see it. They turn around. And the whole skin on her back gets pulled off. And all the blood lands in the van. They pull over. Right, they're trying to decide what to do with the box. To get rid of the box. So they go, Riley goes running onto a bridge. And she sees, there's a great visual in this scene of Pinhead, the helper, standing out in water. Just lighting the mo- everything from that shot looks fucking great. So the hell priest comes to Nora and tells her, look, you gotta choose, you gotta accept the gift. All you have to do is sacrifice two more. And Riley's refusing to do it, so Pinhead makes the blade come true and stab Riley and tells her, right, well now you're marked. So we can choose to take you and your blood at any stage, so you better sacrifice two more. To which the rest of them all show up. They can all see, by the way. Which I, they don't explain why the rest of them can now see the Cenobites. But they can all see the Cenobites now. She's still refusing to do it. 
So Chatterer comes chasing them. And they run into the thought. Colin goes one way. I can't remember where he goes. But Trevor and Riley go running into the gate. Where Chatterer catches them. And pushes the gate right around. So he's there. So Riley stabs Chatterer with the box. And it turns out that will still mark them. So Chatterer just takes a step back. The hell priest puts her fingers or up. The chains come in and just explode. Chatterer. So they run into the house and they re realise that the configuration of the structure around the house actually stops the Cenobites from getting into the house. So they plan, okay, here's the idea. We'll let one in at a time and we'll just stab them and they'll kill each other because they're taking each other. They do that. They open the gate, but there's only the hell priest standing there. So Riley goes, screw this, and goes out to the hell priest. While she's out there, the gate is on one side and the weeper is on the other. And she's still telling them, I'm not doing it, so you can take me. And they, they started explaining that these are gifts, you know, that no one refuses the gifts. And basically, one of them starts coming in. I'm not sure which one this is. It's one that's face is covered, so I can't see. They get it into the house. They lock the house. Uh... Colin says good luck or something to Riley which alerts this thing so it goes wrong they shut one of the doors and it gets stuck in a door like one of the gate type doors but Riley dropped the box so she tells oh and Trevor at this stage is uh, fucked because Chatter took a huge chunk out of his arm so he's pretty much down and out at this stage or so you think. She tells Colin to look for the box that she just dropped it over there. And the box isn't there. And what happens? Vot comes out of nowhere and stabs Colin with the box. And he has this mechanism in his chest. It's big gold metal coming out of his chest. And a bigger piece out of his back. And what that thing is doing... Is Leviathan's gift to him. He asked for sensation. And what they gave to him. Was this thing stuck in it. Which is pulling his nerve system. Around. Just enough. That it'll never go numb. From the pain. <laughs> so this thing. Every now and again clicks. And just starts twisting. And, but, and he's desperate. To get uh, face to face with Leviathan again because he wants that gone he doesn't want their gifts he just wants to die at this stage so now Colin is marked so they open she opens the gates all the gates let all the Cenobites in uh, and you, you find out that Trevor set Riley up all along that he was working for Vought all along that he wanted to get Trevor to get Riley to actually get the box so they could all start marking themselves so they'd be the sacrifices that for him to meet Ting again uh, so who do you call it uh, Colin is down in this area of the house the hell priest and all of them come in but uh, Vought hits the switch or gets Trevor to hit the switch and it turns out he didn't build that for Leviathan or anything it was a prison he built a prison to catch all of the Cenobites in and he's demanding that he has this thing in his chest take it out so him and the hell priest are now having a conversation while that's happening though downstairs the um 
the column has the gape and he starts getting wrapped with like wires and Riley tells the gape hang on I never chose him I didn't mark him and she was like well he is marked type thing and she's like yeah but it was my choice to make and I didn't mark him so she marks Trevor so Trevor gets all messed up the box does configure to Leviathan Leviathan does come down and thing demands an audience with Leviathan so the hell priest has the conversation with Vought of oh we misjudged you you never wanted sensation stuff what is it you see and she says power and he's like yeah power basically all those things come out of his chest they finally break away all of his injuries heal up you see it all heal up <laughs> and he thinks great I'm free of it and boom through the window comes this massive chain and comes bursting through his chest and she's like oh you're going to see some wonders now like <laughs> you are going to be the power you want and it pulls him up and the movie basically ends with him he's now all of his hair is gone he looks diseased he's naked he's stuck on this thing that th these arm things kind of come up and it brings him his arms up and it looks like wings kind of almost and all of a sudden all of his skin starts ripping off and everything and he was made a part of Leviathan <laughs> that, that was his prize was to become part of Leviathan which isn't what he wanted but that's what he got so it looks like he'll be a vehicle for Leviathan and that's basically where the movie ends kind of so that is the new Hellraiser uh, no jump scares quite gory the Cenobites are pretty cool the look the visuals for them and stuff and the, the way they show up and stuff is great and as I said the one shot of the Hell Priest standing out in the water that's a fucking great shot uh there are some downsides you know it is a bit slow uh, particularly at the start but once it gets going it, it gets going it's definitely worth a watch particularly if you enjoyed the original Hellraisers at least the first two maybe three I think you'll enjoy this one it's that time of year anyway so yeah I, 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 could, I could recommend people see it so, that's the 2022 Hellraiser. So, if you've seen it, let us know. And other than that, I'll leave it there for this one. Cheers. Catch you in the next.